just so we are clear here, everyone saying that the Matrix is a trans allegory is being very, very stupid. Well, thank you, Corporation, for this very stunning and brave thread that is uh, coming in quite a fair bit after Pride. I mean, are we doing Pride quarter now or are we skipping straight to Pride year? Um, I'm just a humble invert. I, I don't get a vote in this, apparently. So Netflix put out this big thread on why The Matrix is a trans allegory and it's uh, getting all the praise. And now I've read it, like my mind is blown. I, I, I can see it, the trans symbolism. It's all right there. Neo meets them online. Uh, they all abandon their legal names that the system gave them and they go with their chosen names. And Neo meets a whole bunch of characters and they all die later. Die later. It, it was all right there from the start. Why didn't I see it before? So apparently even the trans creators of The Matrix not only approve of the reading, they intended it. They made The Matrix to be a trans allegory uh, albeit a closeted one, allegedly. We had, you know, the, the Matrix stuff was all like about the desire for transformation, but it was all coming from a closeted point of view. And so we had the character of Switch, who was like a character who would be, you know, a man in the real world or and then a woman in the Matrix. And, you know, that's both were... <laughs> where our headspaces were. Wow, what an interesting statement. Maybe we should remember that one. I'm glad that it has gotten out that, um, you know, that was the original intention, but the world wasn't quite ready of, at a corporate level. The corporate world wasn't ready for it. So we as human beings engage in art in a non-linear way that we can always like, talk about something in, in, in new ways and in new light. Reassessed non-linearly. I think that's postmodernist drivel for we didn't plan this, but the post hoc rationalization is getting us publicity. Maybe I'm just a cynic. This isn't a new theory. It's been around for a while and a lot of people are talking about it at the moment, but I'm not seeing anyone either pro-progressive politics or anti-progressive politics pointing out the huge flaw in the reading that was apparently intended by Lana and Lily Wachowski. If The Matrix is a trans allegory, then it is making a point that is exactly the opposite of what Lily and Lana Wachowski would want. Let's do the analysis on the allegory and we'll skip the usual um, breaking free of the system and, and seeing the world clearly thing because that isn't trans-specific. That can apply to pretty much any reading of the film. We're just going to skip it. The um, the abandoning official names and going for chosen names, like, uh, okay, yeah, that kind of works. That's fine. The Wachowskis, Netflix, the, the big brain academics and the elite, highly qualified journalists that we must all respect in this thread, they, they all make the same problem. And it's that they posit that in this allegory, you you transition and become your real self by leaving the matrix, um, by casting off the illusion. But that is the exact opposite of how transition works. If we're reading the matrix as a trans allegory, then you kind of have to start in the real world, uh, as in your, your assigned gender, the oppressive role, has to be in the real world, in the natural state of things. That, that's your starting point. It takes the intervention of technology, i.e. the matrix, to get you that desired residual self-image. It's a gaping hole in this allegory. It's that the real world, which is supposedly the desirable place, is the harsh reality of the assigned gender that trans characters want to leave. We had the character of Switch, who was like a character who would be, you know, a man in the real world or and then a woman in the Matrix. And, you know, that's both were <laughs> where our headspaces were. Oh, hey, I, I remember that statement. Do you remember that statement? I think I might have played it. So it's pro-trans to say that Switch is really a man, is it? Huh? I mean, that is what she just said. Uh, apparently, 
Lana and Lily Wachowski, trans pioneers, they identify with the character whose female form, whose female identity is fake and artificial, and who in reality, in the real world, is a grubby bloke. Now, I disavow that, YouTube. Disavow, disavow, that's uncomfortably Freudian. No, you see, this is why I know they did not think this through, because this is a massive self-own. By their logic, by this reading, every single trans person is better off in the Matrix. They just proved Cypher right. You know, in the Matrix, they can be who they want to be. In the real world, reality is going to be very harsh. You know, in the real world, where's the HRT coming from? Um, I, I don't think pioneering SRS surgery is a priority for Zion. Incidentally, this is the same reason why the revolutionary reading of The Matrix is uh, incredibly flawed. Um, I've explained it before, but the machines did absolutely nothing wrong. So everyone gleefully virtue signaling and calling The Matrix a trans allegory, uh, you, you need to get a critical thinking module installed because uh, you did not think this one through at all. That is all from me for this week. If you like what I do, please do subscribe. And for this video especially, please do pass it around. Uh, people are saying very silly things about this allegory and I'd like to shut it down. Thanks y'all. Cheese.